It's off. It is these two locas. Ooh. I'm Mika Kenya. I am Jay Gill, and welcome to another Halloween special episode of These Two Locas Live. Yes, Ooh. we're really getting into the the mode of uh, doing these lives, right? Oh, I thought you were gonna say Halloween. I was like, yes. oh, yeah, the mode of Halloween. As yes, well. these lives are definitely, definitely cool. We appreciate everyone that joins and yes. that watches on comments, all that good stuff. So again, you can find this if you don't catch it live. On posted. our posted on our IG and on our Facebook, so and YouTube, we'll we'll share it on YouTube. Later. Oh yes, YouTube, I definitely yeah. Got to Goddamn Facebook and the train my brain. No, 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 YouTube too. <laughs> and and we're on TikTok. Uh, FYI, I just wanted to add that we're trying it. We you know, we I think videos. We should have an open discussion about how we feel about TikTok. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, where do you want to start? I think why? I think this week has been a great week. Yes. I think we should talk about Job Well Talks. Yes. Uh, we went Tuesday to Job Well Talks, the first Job Well Talks from Job Well. It was in um, the Brooklyn Museum. At the Brooklyn Museum of yes. uh, Diversity and Inclusion. The co founders are POC. Woo-hoo. Yes. To, and, you know, and it's really incredible to see because, um, you know, we go to a lot of conferences that always use the word diversity as like a cool new buzzword, but like going there, there was a lot of diversity. It was a lot of people of color there, and we saw Gail King. Yes. The Lord, the she, Lord she, it was awesome because, well, you know, she's a busy woman, so she yes. was like the first speaker, and then she was like out. They didn't even so see her leave. <laughs> so she grades stuff. She yeah, yeah. Less stuff. Yeah, and it, it was an off the record conversation. So uh, none of the media, the press, like that were there. We can't really talk about the details. Sorry. But um, she just gave a lot of insight on her career and how to be a boss and navigate through this industry as a woman, mm-hmm. a woman of color. And um, she got candid about uh, her interview with um, R. Kelly. Which was really interesting to hear. Just, just yeah. yeah. So, absolutely. Is there anything that you took away from the Jopwell series, or maybe of Gail? Because I took everything. <laughs> I know. I was like, give me all of it. <laughs> you know what I love? She's in her sixties, and I think one of the questions that was posed to her from the moderator was, you know, you work two jobs. So mm-hmm. she she runs, or like she works. She's an anchor. Yeah. Yeah. She's an anchor, but she also right. works. Uh, for and old magazine editor at large, yeah, old magazine. Exactly, yeah. and so you know, they, the the moderator asked, like, do you ever get tired, mm-hmm. or do you ever feel like, okay, you're doing too much, and you could, most. yeah, you could slow down. And she's like, why? I mean, the moment the phone stops ringing for me, then you know, I'm gonna wish I still was going at it. And I just love the fact that she's a woman, she's in her 60s, and she's like taken on so many different things and she keeps busy and it's really inspiring to see like it doesn't have to slow down just because you're 60 you don't have to start knitting sweaters all of a sudden so i I like that and she looked great gosh she got body yeah she got body yeah she looked she looks amazing and i want to work on stuff i want to work on me like it just made me feel like wow she's in her 60s and she looks great so and you're over here like, damn, I got football. And yeah, I got like, <laughs> yeah. She, when she was sitting down, you know, she didn't have to be like, so anyway, uh, the other day, you know, it, it was, it was all inspiring. So, absolutely. Yeah. I appreciated the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I was happy that we got to experience that together. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. Uh, what I took from Gail was just uh, to do your work, like let your work show for itself. And yeah. I was like, you know what? You right, Gail. I'll yeah. put in this work. So we're putting in this work with these two logos. Yeah, getting shit done. Uh, so I, for me, that was just yeah, that was the best. And then afterwards, um, you know, after uh, a lot of the speaking that was happening mm-hmm. in panels, we got to interview some really cool people that were speaking. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, you want to talk about? Yes, yeah, so of course. So. With the pleasure, we had a uh, <laughs> meeting the co-founders of Jobwell, Porter and Ryan. Yeah. Uh, we had a great conversation. We're going to share with you that piece later down in the week, um, as well as we interviewed Savan, Marquita, and Daisy, and we'll also share their social media. 
with a clip of our audio. We got really good information in terms of just social media trends, working yeah. in the industry and the media. Uh, for Porter Ryan, we talked about what it really looks like, like diversity and inclusion, yeah. and the reason for the Job World Talk series. Um, and the really cool, interesting thing that they wanted to do was just do something different and yeah. really highlight what was lacking. Right, because they said they've been to a number of conferences over the years, and they just came away feeling kind of like overwhelmed and, and not inspired or ener mm -hmm. energetic or energized after they left. And again, that word diversity was just thrown around, but they didn't really feel that was present. So they decided we're going to do our own series of conferences mm. and make sure that diversion is pre diversion diversity <laughs> is present. So that was really um, inspiring to hear too. I mean, I, I guess another testament to if you see something is missing, that you have to just do it yourself. So. Okay, do it. Yeah. No slogan. But besides that, what's been on the news? So let's do. I want to introduce a segment called Let's Talk About It. Oh, it's a surprise because this is not on our itinerary. This is not on our itinerary, so okay, we'll roll with it. Okay, boss move. So I think there's something lacking. Okay. And I feel like okay. we need to have a conversation okay. about Zoe Kravitz being Catholic. Oh, so let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about it. it. So I, <laughs> so you know, my constant thing about Jay Gill is that she hates everything. But that's kind of what I like about you because I have this weird thing that I like to debate. <laughs> so, 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 okay. First of all, um, if you don't know, uh, there is a new Batman movie in the works. Um, Robert Pattinson is going to play Batman. He's from Twilight. Movies, that's all I know him <laughs> from. He's done other films, that's why it's like well, the only thing I could think of. He did, he did an indie film, I've never seen it, but I know he did an indie film and he played like a really dark character. I saw clips of it and I was like, okay, maybe I see like a Batman in there. So now they're casting other roles and it was announced that Zoe Kravitz is going to play Catwoman in that Batman movie. What is your take? <laughs> oh gosh. So this is my thing. Okay. I haven't seen enough of Zoe to be like, mm -hmm. oh, I think she could pull it off. Like, I see her style. Yeah. Like, um, Z Zazi? Z Zazie Beats. Zazie Beats. She was in the running. I believe it. Mm -hmm. And I think what well, might have messed her up possibly is her being in this Joker movie. Do you think so? I can see that. But I think that also would have been a dope. Because she's in the DC. Well, it would have been dope, right, if she was in this movie and whatever, I haven't watched the Joker, I'm watching it tomorrow, but whatever love itches that they have, like, to see if then she becomes Catwoman, that might be where I would have wanted to see. Yeah. But nonetheless, I haven't really seen much of Zoe, and besides the fact that she's gorgeous and she has gorgeous parents, um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeful. Mm -hmm. I wish her the best. I mean... Still, yeah. POC of color, doing it, Catwoman. Yeah. We've had Halle Berry. We had the original Earth the Kid, yeah. where I still believe is my favorite Catwoman. Um, okay. But you know, I'm going to hold my breath. Well, I feel really confident <laughs> in Zoe. Why? Because I feel like she's, she embodies the, you know, being um, sultry. Like the thing that was missing from Catwoman, from Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. Oh, I forgot she was <laughs> Catwoman. Yes. So we, we, you know, she has like this sultry allure and mystery about mm -hmm. her, and I feel like she could carry that in this movie, especially in a Robert Pattinson. Um, uh, I see. I you know, see. like if it was Christian Bale, I'd go, ah, I don't see the. But you know what's interesting too, because when I saw that she was um, picked. I immediately thought about Robert's ex fiance. Yes, K F K please. And I was like, I kind of get like a vibe. Like I see him, like you mm -hmm. know, I can see him playing off Zoe because I feel like I've seen him in real life on with a girl of that color. Yeah, the girl oh, like that in that vibe. Yeah. But was Zoe in any movies that we know of? I know she yeah. has that show. I believe <laughs> on HBO with um. Whatever our manager's voice. <laughs> Come on, producer. Come on. Uh, Reese Witherspoon, yeah. that, that show that's on. I'm on the scene. Mad Max. Mad Max? Mad Max. The newer Mad Max. The new version of Mad Max. Nope, they don't watch it. Yeah. Like, what? We saw it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She could do it. Yeah. Did, she did was you fall asleep on that one? No, 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 I didn't. No, no. I just forgot. Uh, who's this? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sugar Slim. 
<laughs> Hi everybody that's watching. Thank you again for tuning in. Yeah, thank uh, you. I could have, you know, I can't remember. Yeah, she she got it. She okay. has that, and I feel like Catwoman had has, has a bit of like the exotic, zonkel thing about. <laughs> yeah, she just had. Okay, oh. thank you. <laughs> thank you uh, big oh, big little lies. Big hey. little lies. Yeah. Wow. Uh, we not prepared to have this debate. <laughs> I see. I see it all the time. I don't yeah. know. If, Please let us know if you watch it or if it's good. Maybe that's something yeah. that we should watch. I'm open. Yeah. I'm open. Okay, that's better than what I thought you were going to say. We were I'm open. Like anti Zoe. It, you know what makes sense when you said Robert Patterson, and I'm just thinking like it, pale skin sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it just. Pale skin or pale skin. No, it just works. It's like the, the look and the vibe. Yeah. But, and this Very Batman. Sexy, seductive, gray, yeah. wannabe. And, and they're, they're going to make this Batman um, focus more on him being the greatest detective ever. And if it has that, like, noir detective feel, she's that type of woman that will come in and be like, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to see the costume. She's going to look yes. like I wonder how this is going to go. I know that Jonah Hill is out. He's not going to be in the movie. Oh. He, um, some talks broke down, you yeah. know, so it didn't happen. And some other guy is on board. Uh, I don't really know him like that, but I think they're going to have the Riddler in it. Let's see. Let's see how yeah. it goes. Hi. Um, all right. So with that, Catwoman, Zoe. Yeah, anything else? In the, we should have a segment where you just list all the things that you don't like that's going on. I'm going on in the world. Not in the world. Oh, in like oh, pop culture. Let's keep it oh. light. Okay. Then they'll have to do a whole episode. Yeah, that, you know. okay. Anything else? You see uh, that she's like, I'm, I'm not feeling this? No, you know, this, this, this has week? been a positive week. Oh, <laughs> right. Besides all the regular bullshit in the world, yeah, I think it's been right? a, a positive week. We've got okay. to the top well. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm watching The Joker tomorrow. It's yeah. my sister in law's birthday. No, I wanted to be. We could have had some hot takes on The Joker. Um, I apologize. You're just going to have to wait till next time. Well, I will say that I did read something um, that a bunch of Instagrammers and, or, and YouTubers are going to that staircase in the Bronx. Yeah. Where The Joker walks down. I mean, you, you've seen it in the commercials if you didn't see the movie. But um, there's like a whole Reddit of like, Bronx, first of all, I ain't no Bronx folks was on Reddit. But <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Very right. But they're like they have a whole Reddit thread going on about how like yo you better not come to the Bronx unless you want to get robbed and like they're like they're like looking for people to like come out here try to try to take the try pictures. to exploit try to exploit yeah. the Bronx so they're like we'll rob you but it's it's interesting it doesn't seem like the the Bronx community is very welcoming of the Instagrammers now wanting to go on their staircase and uh, the Bronx community has never been welcoming. <laughs> They're the last to be gentrified. Yes. They're he holding resists, strong. Resist, resist hard. They're holding strong. You love the Bronx. I love the Bronx. Yeah. We were just in the Bronx yesterday yeah. filming. Shout out to Ng D. And uh, I love the Bronx. The Bronx was the first place that I got a job in. The Bronx was, you know, my dad lived in the Bronx for a while. So I got to visit the Bronx in like the 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Ooh, what did you What did you love? Because, you know, it's, I'm like, I'm from the Bronx and I moved to Yonkers when I was 13. So, like, most of us are like, we don't, we don't really want to go back. I mean, the Bronx but, isn't the easiest. I mean, I've had to work in the Bronx and, like, yeah. the worst sections of the Bronx with, yeah. like, homeless population. So, that's, right. I mean, I've seen shit. But I love the people. The people, they're strong. They're, yeah. they love their culture. They, yeah. you know, it's an amazing place. I've always looked forward to them. I remember being younger going to Fordham and, like, yeah. thinking if people don't know what Fordham is, it's like this section of the Bronx with yeah. just... Mad stores. Mad stores. You can get a lot of spandex outfits. Woo, like, child. Yeah. That's, that's high water. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's just, I just love the culture and I love the Bronx and their resistance and, you know, knowing the history of the Bronx and living through the 70s and yeah. the Karak era and people that have been there for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Yeah. Bronx hard. Bronx forever. BX all day. Ah, ah, ah. My mom claims that the Bronx has the best pizza in the whole borough. I probably brought this up in another video, but <laughs> I don't know. Pizza's funny in New York. It's not yeah. like... You think it's better in Boston? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. You guys have dollar pizza. But there's certain areas... Dollar, dollar pizza. Dollar pizza. A, pizza yeah. pizza. a dollar. Not a dollar a one or a dollar a five. So our dollar, dollar pizza is better than the pizza in Boston. You guys have dollar pizza. <laughs> Every pizza is different. Yeah. I worked at a pizza shop for three years, so I feel like I could critique it 
in a different world. I've had to make pizzas, yeah. and I know what it takes to run a pizza shop. Yeah. So I'm gonna eat your pizza, and I'm gonna critique the fuck out of it like it's a red one. Wait, you made you made pizza? Absolutely for three so years. So why are you not making pizza? Me any pizza? You have a husband called Rocker. <laughs> he you don't make pizza. Make I pizza. am retired from the pizza life. Make pizza. <laughs> he doesn't oh, make pizza. <laughs> make your own goddamn pizza. No. I'll buy you the journal. Oh. But no, but the Bronx <laughs> does have really good pizza. But what I say, the Bronx does have mm. is the best chopped cheese. Mm. So thank you to yeah. the Bronx for introducing me to the chopped cheese. Yeah, because especially like the first couple of years when I was living on my own and Ooh. couldn't afford full meals, and like I got tired of ramen. Like you, you scrap up enough change, you go get yourself a chopped cheese. Oh, you can. And for people who don't know what a chopped cheese, I would compare it to like an American sloppy joke, but with taste. <laughs> and uh, it's usually done on a long, fresh okay. spread. Yeah. Unless you're like me and I get it on a roll, but it's just well seasoned mm-hmm. ground meat, hopefully turkey in some places. And yeah. Chop it up. Chopped cheese. Yeah. Third meat. <laughs> Sprinkle, sprinkle, put it together. Sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, babe. Yeah. Oh, right. so that's, that's good. That's Thank all you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank I like you to hear so like an outsider. Perspective. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Because when you're from a place, you're like, oh, like you just want to leave and you don't want to ever back. <laughs> no, because you've been there your whole life, and so <laughs> every time I go to Boston, I'm like, hey, this place. Yeah, so I guess it just depends. Okay. All right. Well, with that being said, um, it is the holiday season. Yes, it's our holiday, which I think we it's probably the only holiday we celebrate together. Really. Because I don't believe in other holidays. What's so funny is that you don't even like horror. I don't, but I love mm-hmm. tapping into my witchery and the autumn and the yeah. death of leaves yeah. and the the natural shapes of the world. I like what? everything but scary. Okay, every oh, so you you just love fall. I love and fall. Halloween. So happy. I love, love fall. Halloween. And fall. I love fall the dressing up. I love tapping into my inner witch. Okay, it's, it's everything else. But the scary shit. Well, we are dressed up in in a cosplay. Probably won't figure this one out. But but the real like, ones will. Yeah, we got like you know the schoolgirl looking thing. So um, we are dressed up as Rachel True, who Woo! played in the craft. Yeah. So if you've never seen the craft, shame. But if you were born, uh, I guess in the eighties and the thirties. 90s. Any, I, I want to say pre ninety two because I feel like yeah. anything past ninety two you might not remember it. Right, right, right. So yeah, so if you like us, you know the older millennials, we watched the craft when we were young, and this was during a time when we were just looking for any sort of example of ourselves in movies, and the craft presented this wonderful opportunity of like these group of witches in high school, and there was one black girl, she had curly hair, and it was like yes, finally, like we got to be. Like different and witchy, and it was like yes. I loved, I loved her. I thought we were like best friends when I watched the movie, but I loved her. <laughs> yes, and so we decided to dress up. Um, like she's the good true, I'm the bad true. So again, in the movie, she's like she goes through the phase. She goes through a journey of you know being good in the beginning, and then she's bad. Yeah, later. We're not going to give it away for those that haven't seen it, but yeah, you if you have seen it, you understand the points of seeing True or her natural mm-hmm. hair. There was the scene where the white girl was talking shit about her nappy hair, yeah, and then she got back at her and did probably one of the things that I feel like many of us wish we could do to yeah. our non melanated counterparts yeah. and just like make them suffer for what they did. Yeah. But she didn't like kill her. Yeah, she, but she definitely, you know, she taught her a lesson. Yeah. Bitch, don't fuck with me. Yeah. So, this is for Rachel True. Rachel, we thank you for representing us in all your films. We thank you for your natural hair, for your yeah. beautiful looks, for your unaging face. Yeah, because she's, you know, she's still, you know, around now, and she goes to looks like a body. Yeah, she goes to conventions sometimes, and I think her real life vibe is that she is very earthy. And, yeah. She, you know, she did ballet. I think she did tarot cards. Uh, she does tarot yeah. cards. Uh, she, and so I don't, I don't feel like her character was too far off from how she is in real, real life, like what she's Ooh. into. So, um, yeah, maybe she really is a blue heart, and she's just like, she's like, oh, this real, <laughs> <laughs> like this is great. 
So no, the script. <laughs> and I think she was like she was the oldest one too, playing a teenager, like older than all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and she looks the same. It's insane. Don't correct. Yes, because there is a picture that I found on her page mm-hmm. of all four of them together, and I was like, hmm, someone looks the same. Others. Someone, Someone can, re, can be recasted yes. for the 2020 version, and yes. some of us will be playing them. Which, <laughs> which they are working on right now. There is a new oh, version. Yes. Um, I see. I seen some pictures of the new girls that they picked for the craft, and mm. you know what was? You know what I don't like so far about? You don't like? I don't yeah, really I like so So what I don't like so far about the new cast and the way they look. It's just that they look pretty, they're very pretty girls, but very generic looking mm. to me. And I feel like what made the craft special is that all the girls had a very unique look, especially, um, I can't remember how to pronounce her name correctly, but I think her name was like Farazo or Faruza, the main girl who's like the bad, bad oh, yeah. girl. She had a very distinct and unique look, and I felt like looking at them together, I was like, they're definitely the outcasts. Yes. And they had, like, their own beauty, but it was just not so stereotypical. And I feel like now, this new one, they just look like, you know, you're too damn cute. Yeah, it just looked like Gossip Girls or something, you know? Like, Who mad are you, bro? Who mad? Yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to buy mm-hmm. that they're the outcasts of the school. It's kind of like <clears throat> when they have those movies and, um, you have to make over the nerdy girl and all she's wearing oh. is glasses. And you just like, oh, let me take off the glasses. And it's like, there, you're beautiful. Oh. And it's like, she was beautiful the whole time. Like, the glasses there didn't make her girl. ugly. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I tend to like those movies that cast, like, real-looking people. I mean, we're all yeah. real. But, like, just those, you know, those looks that we see. An engineer. Yeah, every day. You so, they looks like, like us. <laughs> cast. Yes, that's we'll be still play high school. Bruh, I get pulled over all the time. What are you doing here this far? Yeah. Sir, sir. Just do a high school role. I can be an extra. I can be an extra, yeah. I can give the dirty look. Ew. Yeah. Huh. Did you hear also <laughs> that they are doing a new coolest centered around Stacey Dash's character, Dion? Really? Yes. I did not hear this. That was another beautiful black girl that we uh I, I at least thought cool this was like that was, my favorite movie. That was I, I ran that movie yeah. over and over. <laughs> <that>? Yeah. <laughs> I just ran it over, over whatever. I played it over and over and over again. Um yeah, no, I loved it because again that was like another movie like, ooh, we get to like see ourselves doing something like different. Different. And um she had like all these clothes. Oh my god, like, I loved her clothes. Yeah. And I remember at the time like I would try to dress like her. Oh. Which is so weird because, like, just being in Yonkers at that point. And I was wearing, like, the skirt. You know how she had, like, the furry book bag? Yeah. I, like, my mom, I don't know why she let me do this, but she, like, let me, she just got me these clothes and let me, like, go to school, like, with the socks. Super proud. This. Yeah, because that was my favorite movie. And everybody's like, what are you doing? Like, you're in Yonkers. Yeah, like, what are you doing? So, um, you know, that movie definitely inspired a time. But, yeah, around Stacey Dash's character. Okay, yeah. Dion. Let's see how it goes. You know, we're hoping for the best for the these kids out here because they need more culture. Yeah, and you know, I don't. I know a lot of people hate the reboots, but I don't mind a lot of them. I don't know. I he literally like, took the thought out of my head. I was like, I hate reboots. <laughs> yeah, like I, okay. So you know what it is? It's I don't mind a lot of them because I do feel that it introduces some of the stuff to the to the new generation. But I do get the other argument is that like we're not putting movies on that are you know, with new ideas and that are different. So I get that. Well, going into reboots, I did watch Child's Play last weekend. <laughs> the new Chucky. So have you ever seen any of Chucky movies? Okay. I've seen the original Chucky that tormented me yeah. for years, yes. And I remember him praying over the soul. <laughs> Don't say it now! Oh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so the old Chucky centered more around, like, voodoo. And like, this. like he wasn't, wasn't he Jewish or something? <laughs> I don't know what the guy yeah, was. Jewish. But like, it was like this bad guy yes. on the run, and like he was trying to get away from the cops, and then like he he picked up some voodoo from his friend who do voodoo, and like he just transferred his soul to like hide from the cops. He transferred his soul into the fucking doll, doll. and so like that's how Chucky came to be, and then he ended up being stuck in the doll for a while. So you know like. For a while. For a while. For like a couple years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a long time. So 
the new one completely scrapped the voodoo. What? And they went the AI route. And they, they focus more what? Yeah, they focus more on Chucky being artificial intelligence gone wrong. And so there was like no voodoo. And I was kinda like, I get it. So one part of me gets it because today's kids is more relevant. Mm-hmm. They understand AI. <laughs> That's spiritualism. Yeah, like I mean like spiritualism yeah. and voodoo, they're just kinda like what whatever yeah i think this was more real for them um so i got that part chucky looked weird now Bro, i thought chucky he had the best no, like he had the worst <laughs> face lip yeah you know Ugh. it's just but then again if you think about like the dolls that kids play with now and the way like in the animation he look he had that like lol looking big yeah like the brats doll yeah. or something he had that look so creep so the the old chucky just had the old school doll look so it wouldn't work now i get that i get it mm. it makes sense um i do i do love the guy who did the voiceover because he's done the voiceover for joker the joker uh animation mark hamill i think that's how you say his name mark hamill i love his voice it oh. was creepy <laughs> and that's what you love. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's really, really creepy, and it works for Chucky. Um, I think they suffered from a bad script because uh, the and the boy in this new one was like, I feel like he was like eighteen. I mean, he was like, I think he was like supposed to be ten, but like I think an eighteen year old played him. Like, and in Aubrey Plaza, um, if you're an older millennial, you'll know who Aubrey Plaza is. But she played the mom, so she's like, it's like us playing a mom. That's the girl from. Um, Parks and Recreation, right? Yeah, I think she was on that. Yep. She played the mom? Yeah, but she was like oh, supposed great. to be. I love you way more than that. She, Come on. But she played like a young mom who had her kid at a young yeah. age. Oh, and she's okay. like okay. not really present with her child. Yeah. She's kind of like um, a screw up of a mom. And they live in, like it was funny because they live in some sort of like projects. But like it was like a lot of white people on the project. Like it was just I was like, what project? this now don't get me wrong white people do live in the project yes they do but it was just like a weird like who are these like they look like what's that show recess it just looked like like recess kids Ew. in the projects and i was like where is this at and it was supposed to be chicago and it was just weird it was like it was like off so in other words you fucked up on chuck yeah and hey. i don't know what else has been rebooted for the for the Halloween season. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But yeah, that was I'm I've been trying to catch up to like a lot of horror movies that I've missed. So Child's Play was on there. I can't speak to Midsummer because I fell asleep. I wanted to watch it. <laughs> no, that, that that gives a great take. But no, um, yeah. I, I wanna try to catch up to a lot more. I will not be watching any horror movies. Her you I do want to watch something. Okay. And I think you're gonna be completely surprised okay i'm ready i'm going to watch Mm -hmm. 1984 really but have you watched any of the other american horror no i won't no i just want to watch 1984 that's it give me my old thriller so i will say horror movies from the 80s so 1984 is american horror story is part of the anthology series that american horror story puts on so each season is always a different story yeah but so you don't have to watch them in order per se, but oh, I feel wow. like, I don't know, I feel like at the end, all of this is going to like come together where they're all connected. That, that's the theory mm-hmm. that goes around. But um, 1984, I will say, if you're not into horror or you're, this is like your first introduction, it probably works for you. It's a classic slasher yes. type of film, I'm going to type a show right now. And so, yeah, the other ones can get a little weird. If you're not ready for that the level circus of one? horror, what the fuck? The circus one, the freak freak show. Freak show. Mm-mm. I love freak show. It gets, it goes. Ryan Murphy tends to go like left sometimes with his ideas, and I love it. And people love Coven the best. That was the one based on the witches. And I do want to watch. You that should one watch that. Love yeah, you should watch that one because that is a fan favorite. Everyone I, loves. I Coven. need to watch that. Um, Hotel is another one I love. Nope, I've seen clips. With Lady Gaga, there was a lot of Lady Gaga sex. I saw some of it. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was like every episode she has she has sex with Angela Bassett. Damn, oh, oh that was a lot. Man, just yeah. to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> it was just like this stuff. It was like passionate. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we start to read something. <laughs> I was just like, do, 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 do. well, you were uh, talking, so you should. Yeah, Come uh, on. I can't do two things. Um. <laughs> So yeah, 
So you definitely watch it, but I would recommend that you watch the other. The other one, there's one that would like confuse the hell out of you though. You'd be like, what the heck did I just watch? Why? It was the one where they're in the psych war, asylum. No. Asylum is weird. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything that will target my mental you gotta, health. You got to watch I'm Murder not House. That fucking M- black people Murder here. House and Coven. I'm not is doing anything with clowns. No. Clowns. Mika, yeah. I gave you two. Take two. Murder House. Admir- Murder House is, no. the, is the first. That was a scary one. Murder if you say it was scary, why would it? I, you know, this it's, is it's kind of like messed up. She just like, wants to argue with me at this point. Okay, fine. We'll watch it's 1984. Like, it's it's a pretty straightforward slasher type of stuff. So. I'm looking forward That's to my it. favorite. Um, see, I'm such a fan. I love them all, but. I guess Coven would be my favorite, and that is because they really delve deep into like New Orleans and voodoo and having the two sets of witches. Um, you know, so I, I like that they brought a lot of culture. But I, I think a fun one for me, so that's my favorite, but the fun one for me was Freak Show because it was a lot of singing. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> musical. Yes, and like if you don't know, Ryan Murphy also made Glee, so it was like Glee and Pose and Pose, which so, singing. Yes, yeah, so it was like Glee and horror <laughs> for me all put together. Yeah, it was like your dream show. It was, and I and like I wish I could be be on that set. Oh, I love it. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I she sings, she dances. I, I'm gonna get closer because so hi, Walter. And oh, it went away. Hi, <laughs> Walter. Raise a Walter. Fifty. Okay, I can't see. I can't see. I'm blind. But thank you for and joining. Us. Yeah, I can't see it. <laughs> thank you for joining and watching us. But yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, in order, in honor of uh, Rachel True, we mm-hmm. did want to start a little segment called Two, two Trues and, and a lie. lie. So that's two trues, like Rachel True. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I want to explain the joke just in case. <laughs> yes. So, okay, so we're going to play a game. Yeah. Um, I can start with giving two truths and one lie, and Jay Gill has to guess. You guys can play along and see if you can guess which one is a lie and Ooh. two truths. Answer your answers, guys. I'll okay. Play. And this is off the cuff because I didn't prepare. All right. Um, so, okay, my first one. Um, I played. I played a killer on TV, I played a teacher on TV, I played a stripper on TV. Ooh. Which one is two truths Oh, a lie? Okay. Hey. Anybody have a guess? Oh, Brazil! Hey. So, so okay. <laughs> you played either a killer, a killer, a teacher, a teacher, or a stripper, or a on, stripper. on TV. Which one is the two truths and a lie. So, and I say this with all love and affection. I know you are lazy. <laughs> oh, oh, so oh. I'm going to go one. You're probably a killer because you probably would have loved to live that fantasy. Okay, is that true? That one. Keep going. Them. You probably played a teacher because somebody looked at her like, oh, okay, she could be a teacher. Just put on a suit on her. And I'm gonna go with you were not a stripper because. Mika, you are not climbing a pole for nobody. <laughs> okay, so you're wrong. Oh! I played, um, I played a killer and I played a stripper. But the fun one to me, <laughs> and I never played a teacher. So the fun one for me is, so the stripper, you're right, I am lazy. <laughs> and so um, I did play a stripper on TV. It was on 30 Rock. Shut up! Yeah, it was on 30 Rock. Um, yeah, it's uh, the first season, episode one. Wow, you were there from the start. I was there from the start. It was a scene with Tracy Morgan and um, Tina Fey, and he's in the strip club, and he's just doing his, I don't know if you ever watched 30 Rock, but he was just being crazy in a character. She was like trying to chase him down. And so I'm on the stage working the pole, and funny story is, I got the role because I lied and said I was a real life stripper. I was not. I think I was like 20. Oh my god. And like we was in um we filmed it in Sin City in the Bronx. So we did film mm-hmm. it at an actual strip club. And the other girls who played the extras were real strippers and I was cast because I had I was part of the union 
I was oh. cast as the lead stripper who gets to like be on camera with the main actor, which was Tracy Morgan. So I just dance on the pole, and he just comes up and starts dancing and singing with me. And I'm terrible. If you watch the clip, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there were girls, like, oh, you know, spread eagle, wrapping around. Damn. The pole. And here, I was just like, basic ass <laughs> music. I was like this. I had a ponytail. But it was like pre tattoo me. I had this, like, oh. long ponytail. And I, and I was, like, a size. Like two, <laughs> so that was like it's like to see my younger self like on there, um, not moving very well. Um, <laughs> I, I also like robot. I also like oiled my body with baby oil and like kept slipping off of the pole. Yeah, you didn't do your stripper homework. No, but I didn't want to look ashy, so that's why you use shea butter. Yeah, like, I don't know. Butter. I was just freaking out, like and I would. Fall. I gotta be a stripper. What yeah. Is it? So then I also played a killer, which you would know. It was a trick question because I did. I was on Orange is the New Black. Oh, that's right. And they did give me a backstory that I killed someone, but you don't get to see that because I'm just like I don't get really a speaking part. But I do get like a feature of me um, of when Piper comes into the jail and she comes into the black jail cell, and then I give her a look, and I was gonna have like a little bit more, but they didn't. That didn't happen. That was a trick question. But the backstory was that, like, I was in there for murder. So, did yeah. you relive any fantasies in your head? Like, ooh, who did I kill? Yeah, because like, because all of us extras, we're just like we're sitting around all day, and when you get to you get bumped up to be a feature mm-hmm. extra, and they say you might get like this, you, you know, a role we, here and there. Yeah, so we come up with like the backstory, and I had like it was like fun, and, but it didn't happen. What was your backstory? I want to know. Um, Who you kill? I know, right? Like, um, I just killed, sim- you know, simple, simple shit. Like, kills, kills my lover. You know, all day. <laughs> simple, simple. Yeah, simple. like they abused me. I killed them. Mm-hmm. Revenge fantasy. So I'm all about the revenge fantasy. So yeah, so killed them. Weapon of choice. Um, I think it was a, a passionate murder. Something like a blunt object. Oh, <laughs> like over and over you. again. Yeah, you like, really feel like it's you're doing. Like well. hammering that makes me sound incredibly crazy but i am an, act, an actor and kind of go there so yeah so that was that was it he was wrong oh, damn. okay oh, give me one me. <laughs> all right my two truths and a lie all right so i have worked at a club mm-hmm. i have worked at a national baseball team okay I have worked in the theater. In the theater. Theater. What kind of club? I you I didn't get any background. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. I was just saying, trying to trust it all. Didn't you like make me like? Really though. Yeah, yeah, no. So okay, club, a national baseball team, Mm -hmm. and the third one is a theater. Is it a movie theater? Okay, fine. (laughs) So um, I'm gonna say. You worked at a club in a theater, and you didn't work at a national baseball team. Bam, 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 bam. You're wrong, huh? Oh, <laughs> that was right. Oh, that uh, like a, that was why? Like a no, sorry, no. How's that? No. Good job, Clue Blonde. No, that sounds like a trumpet of like victory. No, you failed. Oh, that's there you go. That's the battery. Wrong sound effect. Okay, so tell us. Um, the lie was I have never worked at a movie theater. Oh. Ever in my life. See, I didn't get specific, so I didn't. no, no, or a theater, a theater, because I'm thinking Broadway. Maybe. No, I wish. No, I know you worked at Broadway. I you worked mean. on Broadway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I worked on Broadway near Broadway. the Broadway. Yeah, thing. yeah. Which, oh, I remember passing by with a tear in my eyes. <laughs> yes, one day. <laughs> uh, yes, I did work at the National Baseball Team. I worked for the Red Sox for three years. Wow. Thank you. Uh, the three years they did not win. I literally oh, started working the year after they won and yeah. left the year before they won. The so it was you. It was me. Uh, it was really me. I don't even want to tell them that. It but really was me. We all know the internal mechanics of what was going on with the Red Sox at that time. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, I did work for the Red Sox. It was yeah. a great experience. Got to see a couple of games. Um, met a couple of the athletes. Made some really good friends. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a blast. And, you know, that was my extra money. So I... You know, game season, pick up a couple shifts, go there after work, chill. Yeah. I get the tickets, so I get you your tickets either into the That's game or I it out for you. And 
that was it. My favorite day though, mm -hmm. but I also did it was their, their Latino day. Yes, so the they had a Latino day. concert and yeah. so they would give them just a section of the park. Yeah. But I was the only Spanish speaking ticketer. Oh, so it was like so my weird. day. Yeah. So I would be there and be like, oh, gotta flex on these hoes. Yeah, you get mad fans. Buenos people. dias. Yes. So it was my favorite time of the year, okay. but uh, it was also like the craziest time because they were like, oh, all these Latin yeah. folks all loud and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. Especially when you're like, oh, you speak Spanish too. Yeah. yeah. I get mad excited. Like, Jen, 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 can you, can you just translate? I'm just yeah. trying to find the name. I don't know. It's a double last name. I was like, guys, I know these children. <laughs> um, but no, it was a great time, and I'm really uh, thankful for the opportunity to work for the Red Sox mm -hmm. um, and for uh, them giving me an opportunity to be there. That's awesome. So that's it. And yes, I did work at a club mm -hmm. for like a month. It was like a, a basic like um, dance club, right? So they had like two levels, and every day was a different day. So mm -hmm. I worked at like what would be like their black night yeah uh, so it'd be like compa and hip-hop yeah. uh, i bartended one time yeah. that was probably the worst bartender yeah i didn't know how to make drinks but okay. i did it yeah uh, we did everything though they were like you're gonna do cold check you're gonna do bar testing uh part then you're gonna be bottle service yeah. you're going oh, to just rotate uh, around everywhere basically it was like you're going to be on stage and dance so like mm -hmm. i remember me and my cousin because only i would get into it some kind of random shit with her. Yeah. We. This is how we got it. We. A friend of a friend was performing. Mm -hmm. This young kid. He was like, "I need two dancers." So we were like, "Sure, why not?" We'll yeah. do it. The owner. The owner saw us. He liked us. He was like, "I'm hiring you guys." Yeah. Then this motherfucker. The way he would pay us is he would ask us how much tip did we get, deduct oh, what we made, and then pay us. That's the difference. So the first time we got here, we were like. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got you. The next day, we were like, oh, yeah, we only made like $45 in tip. Yeah, like, why mm -hmm. would you tell them the truth? What the fuck? Why would you scheme us out of our tip, bro? That's we're here for a service. We're doing our job. Yeah. But I uh, definitely met some Celtics players. I yeah. uh, definitely probably lost a code or two. Mm -hmm. uh, and we definitely got to see Aventura. Okay. And, like, and they were like at the height. height. At the height of when they were. Not like, the like, height, because they were doing still, like, club concerts. Yeah. Uh, this is before the arenas. But we had seen Amadura for years now, but they were like in the same room as us, and it was like, do or die, are we gonna go up to them and be like, it was good? And we did it. <laughs> okay, and what happened? We passed by and we looked at them and we kept them moving. We enjoyed the free concert. Uh, okay. It was a missed opportunity. Ah, uh, nah. But then nah, you don't know. Nah. Because then cause sometimes I, I also don't wanna meet like the people that I like to, because then they'll disappoint me and decrease. Uh -huh. And I'll be like, damn, this happens. Yeah, times where yeah. I'm like, they're not the person I would hope that they would be. A scumbag. Yeah, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> so that is my. Okay. Two I heard something. Okay. Well, I have an easy one for you, oh, but yeah. you know, people haven't haven't seen this part or have, doesn't know this about me. So, all right, I have a phobia. Oh, I know what it is. Okay, I have a phobia of bread. I have a phobia of gum. I have a phobia of holes. So I know you have a phobia of gum, mm -hmm. which I still think is funny, but then it also <laughs> gives me the assurance that I never have to offer you my gum, as selfish true. as that is. That's I, okay. It works. It works. The dynamic works. Um, but I always look out for your food interests mm -hmm. uh, in, in making sure you have any mint. Thing. Mid Listerine. Listerine strips, I know. Prep preferred. Holes. And what was the other one? Bread. It has to be holes because bitch, you love bread. <laughs> <laughs> that was the easy one. I was, it was all it was all up. What? Yeah, so that is right. <laughs> Which is a victory sound, not a wrong sound. Explain this. Okay. What is this? Okay, so, yeah, so gum, you knew about, yeah. um, but, you know, a lot of people don't know about that. Um, so, gum, I have a phobia. It started when I was five years old. I don't think you know the history, though. Um, I was five years old. My mom tried to give me a piece of gum, and she said I started crying and freaking out. And she's like, <laughs> what's happening? And I pulled it out of my mouth, and I said, it, it doesn't disappear. <laughs> and because I understood food to disappear, you chew it, it goes away, and it was just freaking me out that it just wasn't doing anything. So, of course, when I got older, I, I understand the concepts of gum, but then it, it turned into more of, like, it's just 
a nasty idea of chewing something over and over again and like the smell of it smells like old toothpaste that's been left oh on the God. sink so then you're chewing it like you wouldn't chew a piece of meat over and over again like when the meat is tough so it's like I, I thought of it like that like you're just chewing something over and it's gross so and then it just smells like old toothpaste on the sink so I don't like it <laughs> so uh, hello Ms. I Queen? need you just not to <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. With all the people trying, I want to say hello. So, um, so yeah, so that's the gum phobia. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, you can Google it, and it's called chiclophobia. Yes. And Oprah Winfrey I mean, I has the same phobia, but she's rich. So, someone she said if someone puts a piece of gum on her plate, you know how like people take the gum out, they want to eat the food. Oh, that she throws the whole plate away. Oh, wow. And so I can't afford that. <laughs> so I have to, but I would, that does, like if you offer me food and I see a piece of gum that you put on the side, I won't eat from that plate. It just grosses me out. Even if it's not touching. Wow. Yeah, so, so that's that. And holes, I actually found this out because American Horror Story did a whole uh, season on phobias. Oh my God. And one of the phobias the characters had was like holes. And I couldn't watch it. It freaked me out. And I started to feel like I was having a panic attack looking at holes. Like just holes on like the wall. Just like, you know, things like, like things like if you like, uh, go like a zoom in close to stuff and you just see like spores and like holes. And then there's like never ending spaces that go like, where does it lead? What's coming out of it? What's in it? Like. Just, it's gross. Like, just different holes. Like, I don't like looking at it. It makes me physically ill. And now that I remember when I was little and there were seats that had holes in it, I didn't like sitting. You know, I just love the ribs. I didn't like sitting on those because I didn't like the fact that the whole, I didn't know what was in the hole. And something could just come out of it. Yeah, so I think it just kind of like, it made me realize, like, oh, I did have something about holes. Wow. That's um. So I don't like holes or gum. I don't even know what to say. About that. Like I've never hey. in my life have heard about that. Good afternoon to you too. Hey, good afternoon. I can't read it either. I, I know we're gonna have to uh, work this out. That and be stoner. Hey. hey. Um. I don't even know what to do after that. I I feel like whatever I give you is just not gonna compare to chicken telly or holes. Like just don't ever give. Me. Chiclophobia? Chiclophobia. <laughs> Chiclophobia. Chiclophobia. No, yeah, chicken. Chicle- chicle- uh-huh. The chicken chicks. Anyway, I'm yeah. sorry. So, uh, I, so I, those I, are mine too. Well, I you have one more. I, on here. Shit, I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, two truths and a lie. Two truths. All right. And a lie. <laughs> here goes. Okay. I am the youngest and oldest mm-hmm. in my family. Mm-hmm. I I'm trying to think like what's like super random that you not know. <laughs> the youngest and oldest in your family. I'm the youngest and oldest in my family. Strange. Um I do not like chicken. Mm. And um I once had an opportunity to kiss a celebrity but I didn't. Mm. I feel like, how are you going to be Latina and not, and black, and not like chicken? You like chicken. I see you eat chicken. So, <laughs> like, so that, that's got to be the lie. Because you said you don't like chicken. So the thing is, it's the truth. I actually don't like chicken. Really? Outside, outside of fried chicken and rotisserie chicken. What? That's good you eat chicken. That's just how it's prepared. Well, I don't like chicken outside of that. Like, I eat it, and, and I don't even like chicken, fried chicken. I like the skin of chicken. Chicken itself, that was, no, that's I don't good. like it. I, okay, it's, wait, I just wait, wait. don't have it. Like, I'll eat it because I like eat chicken it. skin, is what you're saying. So, like, like, the fried part of a chicken skin? Or like, the rotisserie part, but everything outside of it, I'll eat it because I have to eat as a human being. <laughs> you don't have to eat chicken. But I won't, I just... To me, like, I, I think it's a trap. I don't say it couldn't be tricked. Sorry. No, what? I, I literally <laughs> feel like gagging sometimes when I see chicken. I'm just like, Bleh. Okay. So I really Fine. don't like chicken. Okay, so you don't like chicken. What's the other one? So the other ones are true. Well, 
Well, no, I've never oh, yeah. almost kissed a celebrity. Uh, no, 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 no. I got things with germs in mouths. And okay. I don't know, like, no, no, no. Okay. I got trust issues. I'd be like, no, nah, you might kiss all the bitches. Why well, would I want to have sex with them, like celebrities? But I want to kiss them, like the ones that I think are hot. No. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like sex would be the more disappointing thing because uh, <laughs> it could be disappointing. Statistically, you're not guaranteed that they're gonna be great. Absolutely, and it'll ruin Absolutely. everything. And so, like, like when I think of Jason Momoa, it's like I don't want to. I don't think of having sex with him. I think of like long cuddles. Everything else, like <laughs> sex. Yeah. The the desire. Yeah. The touching. The looking flirty. Like laying down and looking at each other longingly in each other's eyes. And then like like braiding his hair. <laughs> no, I, just, I just want to give him two braids. Oh. Like I just, just want to do that. So sexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's all I want. Like you I know, feel like when guys hear like, oh, we all oh, we love The Rock or Jason Momoa, whoever it is. They're like, oh, they're thinking like we want to bang them, and I'm really like, I, saw, I I did a I did a study, a personal study, and I asked so many different women, and we all they all said the same thing that they just picture like just being with them, mm. but not like a, a penis was not involved, or yeah, vagina. I see that. <laughs> it, was no, not, it was just more of like, just want to hold you. See, and that's funny because. They were the, uh, I was listening to The Breakfast Club and Charlamagne was interviewing, interviewing Lala mm. and he said that when it comes to cheating for men it's the ego and for women it's emo and so he was like, and I was just like, nah, ish, I was like, I can definitely see the emo part, I was like, but sometimes it's just fun. Yeah, we just want you and not the other you said it's still emo the emotional part the caressing yeah that's what I mean that's that, that would be his, part, his point is that we that. yeah that we would just want the emotional part like there's there's a there's a, there's a, um, a new uh, photo shoot with Jason Momoa and he's like ironing but like biting his lip and he's <laughs> ironing yeah. and I was like yeah. I right. yeah. so many wrinkled shirts oh, <laughs> like you know so it's like it was really hot. Like whoever came up with that concept, I was like, he's just doing like household yeah. chores. Start like, my skirt, Jason. Yeah. Jay. So it's like, yeah, really. I mean, I'm sure that's not every woman. You know, no. it's just like maybe. I've definitely like, had <laughs> ego moments where I'm like, I don't fucking care about you. I just want to fuck you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But I think for the most part, I just feel like it would just be super disappointing. Yeah. Because then once the sex happens, it's like, oh, fantasy is gone. Yeah, I think it's easier for guys because I feel like. I feel like you would generally enjoy sex with any hot woman. No, no, because I know some guys that are definitely more emo than ego. Okay. And they're just like, I don't care how bad you are. If you don't understand me, you're not going to get this. I mean, but they would, they can get off easier. Like, they can I mean, orgasm I... easier with, they might not like, oh, they're like, oh, that was all right. Or I didn't really like it that much. Or, yeah. But I feel like for us to achieve, like, that's a lot. If you, yeah, if you make a woman orgasm. And it's not guaranteed that the hot celebrities will do that. Right. But yeah, going back to like your truths and life, I would prefer back. Yeah, so I would say I would definitely say that for me, kissing would be a lot easier than yeah having sex. But I wouldn't mind kissing a celebrity if they were hot. Maybe. Maybe. The mood is right. <laughs> <laughs> Two braids, yeah. hair wraps. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying his scalp? <laughs> He's got Lisa. Hey. <laughs> uh, so it was when it was that, and oh yeah, so I am the youngest and oldest of my family. That's so interesting. This is how it works. Okay. My mom had two daughters. Mm-hmm. My older sister and me. So I am the youngest in my mother's side. I am the first child of my father. Oh, so I am the oldest of my father's side. Tricky trick. Yeah. I was wondering. So, I was like, how? Yeah. So I am the like oldest Benjamin grandchild. Like, <laughs> this I don't get it forever. Yeah, like, I was like, I was confused. Okay. I'm 78. Um, yeah, okay. That's fine. I've been through the war. Oh, jeez. So, <laughs> uh, but no, but that is my, one of my favorite truths is I am the youngest and oldest of the family. I am my grandmother's oldest uh, grandchild, but I'm probably the 80th of my other grandmother. Mm. My mother's side. Because oh, she's geez. the young, she's one of the younger ones. Oh. I was like one of the, the last of the breed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that was it. Yeah. So uh, I... 
we think our hour is about up now. Yeah. Uh, we got four minutes left. So, with that being said, yes. Uh, oh, um, did we did we share the fact that we were gonna release something next week? Oh, well, we are now. Yes, we have some new content. Uh, we are just ra- well, we <laughs> um, Ron, Ron, our editor, Ron <laughs> yes. He is wrapping up some of the last touches to. It's, a, it's an hour long, right? Yes. Yeah. It's an hour long interview with Lady Zombie. Zombie. So it's she's amazing. If you don't know her, Lady Zombie, look her up. She is a mom, a dominatrix, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, businesswoman. Uh, she does everything. She's amazing. She's yeah, she's she's, she's and I love this because she's a, she's a she's gothic and she has this group with um, gothic moms and they meet and do activities and she's like amazing and she does a lot of events in New York City. So we interviewed her. We got to play with some toys. We went to an event, so we captured the entire experience. And um, we're releasing it sometime next week, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Yay! Yeah. Yes, and um, yeah, if, as always, please stick uh, to. <laughs> stick. Like, stick to uh, <laughs> please check out our YouTube page. Yeah. Our link tree is in our bio, so click on our link yes. tree. See our La Lupe and uh, Celia video. We're yeah. gonna try to do some new ones because people really like them and yeah, not. like yeah, yeah, like our impressions. <laughs> like, we, we didn't think of that. I mean, hey. you definitely nailed Celia. Like, you, thank you. No hands down. You are thank Celia. You. Thank um, you. I mean, you, and you capture La Lupe's look. Thank you. Really. Like, so that's dope. I try to yeah. copy her in all my ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but definitely check out our link tree. Has our YouTube, has our personal IG page, and we will hopefully be bringing you way more content. We're trying, y'all. Yeah, um, it's, it's a lot of. We actually we have a lot of content. It's just editing. We work. Yeah, we work. We work from so time. yeah, but we will be releasing that's an hour long. We'll put it on YouTube, but we'll yeah. share parts of it on Instagram like we always do. Yes. Um, but definitely check it out. Check it out. We're yeah. excited, and we're definitely gonna try to recapture some of the old videos that we have. To kind of so you can see a little bit more of the behind the scenes yeah. uh, action as to that. So we're trying, we're growing, yeah. uh, we're bossing up uh, our <laughs> best things. lives, and we're coming to our year. We are yes. soon going to be a year old. Um, I think we look great for a year. Yeah, we do. Uh, 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 <laughs> Especially from our first video. Oh, uh, the growth, <laughs> the growth. Uh, but yeah, so just be on the lookout for next month. Yes. Our another holiday special because you know they gotta run rampant our credit cards and money. Yeah. So we have another holiday special carrying out through the year end, and then we'll just be working. Like you yeah. know, we'll, we'll take a little break, but not too much of a break. We'll no. just be working. So check us out, and thank you for joining us again at these two locas. Bye. Bye. Show me your socks. Ah, no, her socks are the devil socks. She's got chucky, chucky. I'm trying to like not show you my vagina at the show same time. Show it.